hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is kemi i'm a nigerian living in winnipeg manitoba canada if you're new here thank you for clicking on that thumbnail and for watching this video if you're a um, returning subscriber you guys are the real mvp thank you for subscribing thank you for liking the videos um thank you you know for dropping your comments in the comment section i see them all i really appreciate them and i especially want to give a shout out to uh, my subscribers three of my subscribers i i you know one way or the other we ran into ourselves here in winnipeg canada can you be that um that's toy um we met at canadian superstore um i remember bolanle we met at opportunities for employment and also timmy Tokwe, we just met on the streets of canada <laughs> all right thank you guys thank you i really appreciate you hopefully for some of you you've also told me you've landed i hope we run into ourselves one day so yes this video is a different one you know um i've promised and also based on popular demand that i was going to say what we did or how we came to be in canada so um that's what this video is for you don't want to miss it please stay till the end of course like it um if you have not yet subscribed subscribe turn on post notification and also drop a comment in the comment section i'm going to be sure to reply that thank you let's go yeah I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet, lose won't have it till I'm doomed in a casket. I ain't playing, got a weird mind. If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine. If the shoot tastes sour, you should taste mine. So welcome back guys. Are you ready? Um let's just get started, yeah. So um our journey to Canada began in 2019 when my sister-in-law, you know came to Canada and then she just said us about how the structure was good, how it was the best option for our, for our daughter, the opportunities that were available, you know, and so much more that you'll be hearing about in subsequent videos. So we decided, okay, we'll also give it a try. And so we'll put in our first express of entry, express expression of interest, sorry. <laughs> so we put in our first expression of interest in 2019. So before we submitted the expression of interest we there are some steps we need to check first we had to check that we were even eligible for express entry because um there's something called crs calculator i'm going to link it in the descript description box it helps you to check if you're even eligible at all to apply it asks you some information about your age your job and so many other things i'm just going to link it there so you can check it out so um we of course uh, we submitted our profile and of course some things we needed to put in place first for everyone if you want to have an express express entry profile the first thing which is given is your passport you must have a passport and then we did our ECA. ECA is Educational Credential Assessment. That is all your credentials from secondary, university. For us, my secondary certificate, my university, I have, I have two degrees, a bachelor's degree, BSc, and a master's degree. So we had to, how much did we pay? I think we paid about each person. Um, ECA cost okay, those about 58,000 there about. So you, it's, that one is now compulsory it's yeah it's now close to hundred thousand as at 2019 it was fifty eight thousand. so we had to do our eca where our credentials were accredited and to be sure that it was not fake it was standard and it was um you know canadian um grade let me for lack of words yeah so and of course the next thing we had to do was the almighty high health ah and trust your girl now i had Eight, yes. After the health, I had eight. My husband also had to write high health, and he had oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the first one I had 7.5, and my husband had seven. <laughs> Me being the epico, you know. So, of course, because he also did high health, he had it to a uh, score. But then I was also the principal applicant. Let me talk about the principal applicant now. Whenever you want to submit a profile, someone has to be the principal applicant. So I was the principal applicant, even though my husband was the brain behind the whole thing. He was the one doing the running around, but I was the principal applicant because I was younger and I had a master's degree, you know. 
and then also because of my job because of my career yes i was a public health i'm a public health professional and then it had the my noc is kind of like noc is national occupational classification system is a system for classifying occupations in canada so because i had i was younger of course i had the masters and some other factors i had to be the principal applicant so my husband and my daughter were like my dependents they were you know following me they were under my own application so back to back on track so uh, my husband had to assist he did my um he had to do the running arounds. He had to do his own um, ECA. So for ECA, you need to get your transcripts from your school, yeah. And for all, the, if you have, I think now it has changed. Now it only requires you to do for your last degree. So if you have a bachelor's and a master's, you only do ECA for your master's. But for us, we had to do like for all. So if you went to five universities, my dear, you have to do all the five. So my husband let was them, doing. Let them see Yes, but please confirm this. Confirm this fact. I only heard this from someone, but please confirm to be sure that that is what's still applicable right now. So um, we did that. We did our ECA. We did our high yields, and then we submitted our profile. But the profile expires expired. So the express entry profile expires after a year if you are not selected. Now let me talk about the submission and the pool. When you submit an application you are dumped into a pool of applicants so let's say the and you are awarded a score a crs score now this crs score once again is dependent on your age your um level of education and some other factors so for us the first one our crs score i think was about 300 and something mm -hmm. i'm not sure of the exact four figure now okay we had four six our first score was 406 so we submitted our profile that profile expired and so we um 2020 COVID of course too. covid the whole mighty covid happened and then we just left it and then i think towards the end of 2020 november december i applied for another hiatus and we decided to because it was also going to um increase our chances and increase our score so the higher your hiatus um the higher your score again so i decided to you know write another hiatus but this time around i wrote the computer paste and guess what, guess what guys i had hate so it increased our score again to 416. So another thing that could actually increase your score if you decide to do French, they are big on language. Language is another thing that adds to your score. So we, um, I did another high health. Of course, my husband didn't do because I'm the principal applicant. So I did another high health. And uh, I think the ECA, of course, was still valid. Our passport was there. And guess what, guys? The devil wanted to bring its head. One day along the line, rain fell. And my husband, we, you know, the kind of rain that falls in Nigeria, and then we were upstairs, the rain fell, and then the wind blew. I was, I was, I was working on the profile. Funnily, mm -hmm. my husband was working on the profile. He kept our passport in his laptop bag. Rain fell, and the passport we had just gotten, like, it's not even up to six months. The passport wasn't even long. And guess what? Rain fell, and all our passports were damaged exactly the database as in that database was the only part that was damaged my husband was devastated in fact we were devastated that which kind of devil is this <laughs> as in he kept beating himself up that how could that have happened i cleared everything i cleared the laptop i cleared how could i have forgotten the bag but that's well we thank god for where we are now so let me get back to the story so um I wrote my another hiatus we applied for i got another passport i had to get another passport first before every other person because i needed to write another hiatus and it was one of the requirements for you to write your hiatus you need to have gotten your passport so yeah um i got my new passport um i wrote my hiatus like i said computer based and i scored it which added to our score so we submitted our application again so along the line we submitted our application january 2021 we didn't submit the application up until okay until april i think okay we didn't submit that so at this point we until, were until june okay so at this point we were kind of relaxed we were like okay you know covid had happened a lot had happened we were all relaxed like okay whatever we be we be <laughs> you know so we then submit submitted in june when and so then when they did in when we got the first draw in 2021 first pap draw so um we now got a hang of it that 
PMP draw was was happening. So PMP draw is where some provinces in Canada, like Manitoba, Alberta, Saskatchewan, there are a couple of them. You can check them to know which um, of those provinces do provincial draw. So we got the hang of it that uh, Manitoba was now having it had its first draw in 2021. So we decided to now create a provincial profile. Now, what provincial profile also does is that it has you a whooping 600 marks. So nominated. if you are nominated, yes, you have to be nominated first. So what we did was, um, of course, our express entry profile was in one side, which is like the federal profile. So then we also had to, so each province had its own, like you have to do another application. So we put in an application for um, the province of Manit Manitoba, province of Manitoba, of course, and what increased our chances of being selected in Manitoba was because we had a relative. So you need to have a family or a relative. It, ha it gives you like 50 marks, right? For your uh, provincial um, application. So we put in that application, of course, that one also required your education, your work experience, and so much more. Uh, uh, and very important, your proof of funds. There's, there's a certain amounts that you must prove that you have. And how do you prove that you have them? You must state the assets. Maybe you have 10 cars, you have a business, you have a company. You must just prove that it is your money and that you're not borrowing. So we um, submitted the application, and I think about two or three months after, we got letter of advice to letter of advice to apply LAA. Let's just call it LAA, and then we were advised to apply to the province of Manitoba. It was at that point that it was like, okay, this thing is we are getting there, we are getting there. My husband at this point, you know, was all gingered. Even but for me, my spirit was. I was still like, okay. Sincerely, I was like, okay, let's let's just do it. So we um, submitted our application. I think we also had to pay about five hundred Canadian dollars which was non-refundable to submit our application to the province of Manitoba. So we submitted our application and then two, three weeks after, or a month after, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, about a month after, we were nominated to the province no, of Manitoba. Uh, three months after. Oh yeah, sorry, it's three similar. months. You see what I'm saying? I wasn't the brain behind all of this. It's my dear husband. Please hail him in the comment section for me. So, we submitted, uh, um, oh yeah, I said three months after we got nominated and um, the province of Manitoba actually gave us 600 max. <laughs> Had 600 to 400. So imagine if there's a pool or there's just like jump score if you're in Nigeria. So, well, the point is that they gave us an extra 600 max and then we added that to our express entry profile, which how many weeks after again? Two weeks after, we got invitation to apply from the almighty Canada. The federal, we got our express entry profile, of course, because our CRS score was now high. We were picked from the pool and we got invitation to apply. So when you get the invitation, when we got the invitation to apply, what it means at this point is that you also have to apply now to federal. You see all those things you were doing before? It was just preamble. It was at this point that you just know that you are going to Canada or you are in the process <laughs> or you are in the pathway. It's even maybe or it's still not certain yet, yeah. So we got a uh, invitation to apply, and we're given a couple of days. I think we're also given what sixty days. I think we got our invitation to apply December, December twenty twenty one. I can't forget that one. You, of all the things, that, that's the only one I cannot forget. So we got our invitation to apply December twenty twenty one, and then we had to pay. I think more than it's more than it's more than. I'm not sure of the exact figure here. But we had to pay about 1,500 Canadian dollars for application. What else did we need to submit our IT? Aha, uh -huh. now you had to prove. No, that was in province. Yeah, it's it was in province that it's you had proof. to prove. It's still proof. Okay. Some, of, some of the documents you use in province, yes. you can still reuse them. Yes, so some of the documents you use. Your used. certificate, your school certificate. Yes, will be there. yes. Uh, police uh, clearance. Okay. Will be there. Okay, uh, yeah. Proof so of from your bank yeah there. yeah i get that so for at this point now so remember in province i said province was because we had someone in manitoba 
not you have to prove that you know there are people that do runs i know there are people that do that but for for this i'm talking about us now you have to prove that the relative is your relative you understand what i mean so there must be there are some documents you need to prove that the best of proof of relationship let me just put it that way proof of relationship also your proof of funds you need to get a letter from your bank to show that yeah you have that money in your account a reference letter a bank statement and so many things so for us to submit a high ta we needed to get those documents those documents you've submitted in province at this point you need to be sure now this is where some people get kicked out they submit a different information in provincial application and then when it comes to federal application they submit an entirely different thing so you need to be sure that if you are saying you worked with abc company from june 2018 to july 2020 you must repeat the same thing in your federal application or else you'll be yanked off so it's a very delicate process at this point so um of course we're giving 60 days to submit our ita um with the proof of funds proof of relationship um i think police reports too mm. yeah we're also told to submit police reports what else medicals no, 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 no. okay at this point so we submitted our application and then we kept our fingers crossed so we got our acknowledgement of receipt that yes so we've seen your um application we will now start processing it now the long wait began which is usually the point where the long wait begins so um after that a um AOR, we call it AOR, uh, acknowledgement of receipt that is that they've received your application then uh you now begin to wait for when your application moves to the next stage so in the next stage we got a notification again that we could now go for our biomed metrics oh for our medical so we did the medical first so we now got the um, notification we could go for medical yeah so for us we did our medical in um iom i think it's in maryland yeah we did ours in iom it's the queue that day was humongous <laughs> you know that was a process that was a long thing so we had to do a series of tests for me for my husband our daughter so for children their home test is not as much as they had us but of course we had to do all those tests and then you don't even get to see your results that's the thing just to be sure that you're medically fit the doctors or the examiners send it directly to IRCC to federal Canadian government yeah so we submitted that and then after that we what did we okay we were waiting for the next so we needed to know if we passed medicals so um we didn't know yet at this point did we yeah next we got another notification to go and do our biometrics that's the fingerprint now this was just for did our daughter do no 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 biometrics wasn't for um for minors so it was just for her so I did uh, both of us did our biometrics and then um there was a slip that we had to scan and then send with application uh so what what happened after that after biometrics we waited so after yeah. biometrics we waited sorry guys i have to be doing this my husband won't come here you know i said it is the brain behind it so that's why i have to be doing this just bear with me okay in the situation that medical has been passed so finally got a notification that medica had been passed but like fit to travel good fit to be in canada so we got notification that medicals had been passed then there are some other criteria security like passed security, criminality security, passed then eligibility, those kind of thing yeah. eligibility criteria so the eligibility criteria and the background check is where they check to say oh you said you work in social so organization from this to this there's all you know all the background check to check that you really have this relative to check that the money you said you have in your account is really in your account or is you, you get that kind of thing so the proof of fun things so like overall background check now it is at this point that some people's application gets stored you should also know that no two application is the same you understand there are some people that we actually got uh acknowledgement of receipt that is we submitted our application at the same time and you know within days they got their own um ppr we are, we are still coming to that i'm jumping the gun here so my point is that no two application is the same it depends on i think the officer that is handing your application and then some other factors that uh, might either prolong or hasten your application and of course the favor of god <laughs> so um after that after after um we got well we were waiting for okay criminality 
we had passed medicals we had passed um our biometrics was good police record uh, police reports um all those things then we now started waiting for the almighty ppr what's the meaning of ppr you guys do you know what i didn't take this serious i didn't take this whole process of coming to canada serious until i saw that we had passed until we did medicals until i saw that we had passed medicals and then i was like okay okay i think this thing is becoming real i think we are really coming to canada don't don't judge me here guys i just you know it, it wasn't really real to me i was like okay is it really possible can we you know but then let me also mention at this point that we are not displacing the place of i don't know if i should say it in this video but we are not displacing the place of place, place of god's favor in this whole journey because so many things just worked and worked and worked um for our good really maybe i should say it in another video but for this because you're just talking about the process we did i'm just going to give you straight the way we did that we'll do that in another video so finally when did you get ppr we got ppr we got our uh, okay so we've been waiting for ppr so we belong to this whatsapp group so there are these groups whatsapp group telegram groups of people who are you know according to your stage there are groups that were available out there so i was added so when we got our invitation to apply we were moved to the next group then right? we were moved to the next group so at the last group before ppr you know according to your dates let's say they you got your acknowledgement of receipts um january 10 and you got ppr and you got you know so it was stage by stage people were comparing those so it was easy to track yeah yeah possibly when you possibly get yeah so to the next uh, stage we were on this group and the, mind you this group group was not just for nigerians we had people from other countries so we had India. data analysts yes indians from everywhere data analysts that were saying they had these projections that okay if you got your hair at so 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 time there's a possibility that you get your people at a so 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 time so we were patiently waiting and then you know our own AOR was january 4 no january 20 something 29. 29 okay so we got our acknowledgement of receipts for um on january 29 so when it was like january 4 uh, people who January 4 got their people were like, okay, it's getting to us, it's getting, you know, it was reality. And then when it got to January 27, and we saw people who submitted and got to their people, we were like, oh, it's almost. And then we've been waiting, we were refreshing, checking our mails. And then because I was principal applicant, I was one that was supposed to receive the mail. So someday, one glorious day, on a Friday, right? I think it was on a Friday. I was coming back from work and I just saw my way. I just saw requests for ready for visa. Guys, I, I was in the public transport, but I could not contain the joy. I almost, you know, when you are screaming, but you are not screaming out. That was my, the first thing I called my husband, I said, guess what? He was like, I said, guess what? I just thought it as it he was shouting where I was, but I wished I could scream where I was. But if I screamed in the bus, people would have been wondering that is is this lady okay? But I contained it. I contained it. I, I you know I kept I, I I checked the mail again. Wait, is this true? Ready for visa? Ready for visa? Guys, you could not tell the excitement I felt. So ready for visa just means that it was now time for you to send your passport to um ircc right to the visa office so we sent our okay so we it was time for us to send our passport so what did we need to send our passport we need to send do, take some photograph passport photographs and um you know there was a standard so we did two cars at studio 24 i guess so we sent our passport like um the next monday because it was a friday we sent it on a monday we sent her through lagos um excuse me we sent it through lagos what's it called visa office lagos the same place where we did our biometrics that was in um i think lucky one what's the name of that place uh, vfs vfs <laughs> yes we send it through lagos vfs so normally people would send their passports straight to kenya straight to ghana straight to wherever they wanted to but we sent through lagos vfs then because um we're already at that point we were not going to pay transmission then, fee because um, 
I think how long um 40 40 to 45 45 uh, there about 45 days after um you know we got our passport back and then so the the uh, process is that usually when you send your passport um it comes with a confirmation of permanent residency and also a counter for it, which is your visa as a what you've been waiting for go go but the point is that we kept on tracking along the way as we sent to um the VFS, in fact, as it was leaving Lagos, we were tracking, we were getting mails along the way. We got mail when we that left Lagos um, VFS and arrived at Accra VFS, when he went to Accra RCC, when he was stamped, when he was coming back. I mean, all through the way, we kept on getting notifications through me. I, I kept on getting mails that um, along the way to know the process of uh, application. And then, of course, when he finally arrived, you should see that video. I shot a video of when um the passport arrived you know the 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 in the envelopes I and mean, then that i think that was like my first video in this series so you should watch that video also so of course immediately and um, then the planning began the planning had even began immediately we got the request for visa you know we were happy then i started buying buying bags buying food items and all that you know so i'm going to be doing a video later of course so i should also let you know that um this is our own way. This is how we relocated to Canada. This is how we came to Canada. There are also several other, you know, pathways, several other methods by which uh, people can come, by which you can come to Canada. So I'm going to do the research, if possible, also interview some people that I know that have come through other pathways. You can come through study, you can come through um, work. There are some kind of like doctors, nurses, some very high demand jobs. You know, also we have the Atlantic immigration, which is when you get a job first and then your employer does the whole process. So my point is that there are so many other ways through which you can come to Canada, but I've just narrated how we came to Canada. So thank you for watching. Of course, if you watch up to this point, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up, um, you know, shows that you like the video and also helps youtube to recommend to other people and also we want other people to gain from this and not miss out from this um drop a comment in the comment section as a matter of fact i'd like you to if you have any other question or there's something else you want to know that i didn't talk about drop a question in the comment section and i'm going to compile them and you do a like a q and a video to address all those questions um you know just so you get all the information i'll do my research and then um bring it back to you in a video so thank you for watching guys um thank you so much for listening up to this point and um till we meet again in the next video bye for now guys <laughs> place where they told you what to chase told you how to run the race every move was on the page but i didn't like their way